my plan for this this talk today is um, to first of all I'll, I'll, I'll sort of give you a, a bit of an introduction to myself um, and then uh, talk about the company that I'm a director of um, Real Connections is the name of it um, and then I'm going to talk through some of the work that we've done some of the projects we've worked on um, and then I'm going to focus on a particular project, which was called the Young Film Programmers Project. And in particular, be looking at how we've adapted that work to, to the, the pandemic um, and uh, sort of talk through that, uh, so the more recent work that we've done this year. Um, and then I'm going to finish with uh, a look forward to what we're doing in the future, what our plans are. And along the way, um, depending on how we're doing for time, I might, I'm hoping to be able to show you a short film that we've worked on just to break things up a bit. Okay. Um, I can't wait. There we go. So uh, this is just a few images to give you a flavour of sort of where I've come from. Um, this was from a, this is one particular event that I worked on um, back in the day when I worked in the independent, well, I hasten to say independent cinema, um, in, an, uh, in a cultural cinema um, where I used to be education officer. It's actually operated by Picture House. It's called Cinema City, it's in Norwich. I should have said perhaps, um, I'm based in Norwich, in Norfolk, in the east of England. I think there may be some people from, from all over the country and, and even other countries here today. So um, yes, Norwich in uh, Norfolk, um, where we have this lovely old cinema um, and this particular screening was part of a young, young film programmers project that we were running at the time. So Wes Anderson mystery, mystery screening was the event. It was just, it's a flavor of, of what we used to do um, back then. Uh, when I say we, I uh, include my colleague and co-director of Real Connections, Guy Martin. He's the man in the suit and tie there, uh, DJ. He's also present um, this evening. So he uh, will be on hand to sort of help me field some questions. This was a fun evening. Um, I don't know if you know who I'm dressed up as there, um, but I'm supposed to be Margot Tenenbaum from the Royal Tenenbaums. I know I'm not really uh, very Gwyneth Paltrow, but um, I, uh, yeah, it, was, it was just made a bit of effort. And we had some fantastic Mr. Foxes, and uh, as you can see, some a lobby boy from Grand Budapest Hotel. Um, and the film we screened was The Life Aquatic um, with Steve Zizou. Um, and it was really fun, successful evening. Um, so this is a, it's actually a portrait I had uh, taken for my new job. Um, so I thought I'd stick it in there. Um, but as well as being director of Real Connections, um, I've also done a, a PhD and finished that quite recently. Um, and that was on um, teenage film consumption. Um, and that tied in really quite well with the work that I was doing at Cinema City, doing education projects and so on. Um, and it was all designed to have a sort of synergy to it. Um, and since graduating with the PhD, um, I have uh, got a job as a lecturer at the University of the Arts here in Norwich, um, where I'm now lecturing in animation and visual effects. Um, but I would say sort of the thing that ties all of these different aspects of what I do together is, is a passion for the cinema experience and a drive to ensure that future generations can continue to enjoy independent cinemas and a full range of specialized films. Um, it does all sort of um, correlate 
Um, and it has been quite handy to be uh, working in industry as well as, as studying and researching and, and doing that side of things as well. So I'm hoping to continue to uh, have it all, some might say. Um, I haven't hasn't fallen over yet. Okay, um, so next, Real Connections then. This company was formed last year in January. So it's, it's coming up to two years old. Um, we are registered as a community interest company, which is uh, slightly different to a, chari a registered charity. And it's, um, it's essentially we operate on a not-for-profit basis. Um, and we get a lot of our funding from uh, for projects and so on and from public funding bodies. Um, the basis of what we do is we deliver film and music activities to community groups to increase participation um, and benefit people of all ages and abilities. Uh, and in particular, we, we do try to focus on community groups or individuals who are experiencing social isolation um, and economic disadvantage. Um, and being here in Norfolk, it's, it is a very rural county. Um, so there are issues of rural isolation here. Um, and the, so the, the wider scope of our work is, is work, working in 12 counties in the southeast of England. Um, and I'll talk about that a bit more in relation to the Young Film Programmers Project. Um, so yeah, the, the ethos of Real Connections is, is the belief is that um, these activities that we run and that we facilitate play an important and fun role in enhancing people's quality of life. Um, and also they're a powerful tool for learning um, for people of all ages. And in the past, we've, we have done a fair bit of work with older people um, including reminiscence work uh, and people who are suffering from dementia, um, and that can be that can be very powerful in getting these particular people and their carers to have some quality time together, um, just by having them sit around a table and sort of look at film memorabilia, have a chat about posters, or um, then we would show them. Uh, big colourful Hollywood movies from the 1950s or White Christmas was one that we showed. Um, yeah, uh, so that's the kind of thing that we've we've done in the past and uh, we'd like to do again. Um, so this is the team that I work with. Um, so there's Guy, myself and Lewis. Lewis Wickwar is a, um, he's a, a filmmaker he does a lot of the sort of practical delivery for us. Um, and, and then Millie, uh, she, she has a dual role. She works for a youth arts organization. She's very good with marketing um, and social media, although she would say she isn't, she's very modest. She's also a fabulous musician. Um, so she, she does get involved with some of the music based work that we do. Um, but Guy is our kind of, He's our, what's the word? He's, he's the, 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 main, the main guy of, of this company. Um, and uh, it's kind of his baby and we're all, all along for the ride. Um, but I have worked with Guy for, let me work it out, 13 years now. Um, so yeah, we know we have a good working relationship and, and we haven't fallen out yet. So long may it last. Okay, um, so let's, uh, let's continue with looking at some of the projects that we've worked on um, since, since starting the company last year. Um, the, first, the first event that we actually ran was um, something in conjunction with the British Film Institute. It was a project they had called Changing Times. Um, and we delivered two events which were part of the BFI Film Audience Network's Nationwide Changing Times programme. 
uh, it was a four year initiative that explored over a century of social change um, in the UK. And uh, it was designed in order to get um, groups and exhibitors to access film and television archive collections um, and to engage new audiences with archive film. Um, so back in May last year, we looked uh, particularly at archive film. Um, May, it was actually women's amateur filmmakers um, and we called the event Sisters of Silence. And the image there on the right um, is one of the performers we had because we had silent, we, we showed this, the film on the screen there and, and we had mu musicians compose or uh, curate or perform um, their own music with the film, um, the film screening in the background. Um, and they were all young female musicians as well. So, so it was very much a sort of um, feminist kind of theme to that evening. Um, and that went really well. And, and that was in an old chapel in Norwich. So it was really atmospheric. Um, and we were really pleased that we had full house at our first event. And it wasn't just one type of person. It was, it was all kind of age ranges and a real kind of cross section of, of um, the Norwich society really. So that was a, that was a good place to start. Um, and then we did another event um, was in November last year and it was a Britain on film protest. And it was um, a selection of archive material which was about um, activism in the UK. Uh, so that sort of spanned the last 50 years or so. Um, and that was held at Cinema City. And then we had, we invited a panel of speakers uh, and they were young, there were some young activists. There was a Green Party leader um, and uh, I chaired a discussion with them after the archive films. Um, and that was just a, a, a really good example of the way that archive films can be used by modern audiences to sort of talk about current issues. Um, and that went well. And then we moved on to some more, some sort of bigger projects. So, so the one, uh, one that I'm gonna highlight here is called Our Fenland. Um, we received a commission from, um, from the Norfolk and Norwich Festival Bridge. Um, and that was money from the Lottery Heritage Fund and Historic England as well. Um, and so for that one, we went out to a town called March in the Cambridgeshire Fens. And we worked with a group of young people who lived there. And the aim was to increase their engagement with their natural and cultural heritage. Um, so uh, as part of the project, these young people um, worked with filmmakers uh, and they went, they sort of walked around the town and they uh, did some research about the stories um, connected with March. Um, they went to a, a local museum there and they looked at artifacts and um, they came up with an idea, uh, well, several ideas for a short film, um, which actually turned out to be about 15 minutes long, but it has lots of different chapters to it. So they used um, stop motion animation. They um, did some, uh, they had archive film that was integrated within that. Um, and uh, if you were interested, there is a link within my slides. I'm, I'm not gonna click on it now, um, but it's likely that I think Maya can post these slides or somewhere on the website or something afterwards, if anyone's really interested. Yep, 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 we can share them. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, or you could contact me directly. There is, my contact details are, um, are at the end of this slideshow. 
Um, so one of the participants of our Fenland uh, is quoted as saying, this is just to give you an idea of the impact of, of this project. They said, if you'd asked me anything, if you'd asked me before the project started um, to walk around the town and march, I wouldn't have picked anything up about the history. Whereas now I'm looking around thinking, no, it wasn't like that 100 years ago. Uh, how have we changed things so massively? Um, because it's our Fenland and we've done this to it. In some ways it's positive and others negative, but being able to register and pick that up has been amazing. So, so that particular person um, talks there about how it's made them see things differently. Um, and, and there was a lot of positive feedback from those young people for that project all makes it feel worthwhile when you hear things like that. Um, and then another project that we were commissioned by the Norfolk and Norwich Festival Bridge again, um, was called, we called it Creating the Future. This was last summer um, and they commissioned us to create 10 short films which each of them were led and made by young people from a different um, part of Cambridgeshire. This is Soham village um, in Cambridgeshire. And uh, each film represented one of the DCMS identified creative industries and was based around an interview with a sector professional who lives and works in and around the Cambridgeshire region. And the aim of this was to show students that they don't have to necessarily leave their region and go to London or wherever um, for a creative job. There's all kinds of different jobs in the creative industries that uh, are open to them. Um, the films were made available online for schools and parents and young people. And uh, I'm going to attempt to click on the on the link and I think we're going to watch um, a five minute short film here um, and it's it's a, an artist that the young so bear in mind that the, the the young people devise some questions and they actually they're off camera interviewing this the the, ind the individuals and then we did appoint a an animator to um, enhance the the film afterwards so it, it adds a bit of fun and interest so let's see if this works yeah. okay. mm -hmm. my name's Harold Offe um, I am an artist I first got into it through school I guess I was fortunate enough to have just a really good teacher and I'd always been interested in art and drama and English and things like that creative subjects so yeah I got a lot of support and encouragement I think the encouragement was the most important thing in terms of having an interest in a particular subject. I guess I'm a little bit different as an artist in that I don't necessarily, you know, like some artists, like painters work with paint or ceramics, you know, they work with clay. I think my material's people and situations and places and I respond to those. Earlier this year, I did a project in Croydon in South London with a gallery, which is in a shopping center. And they invited me to work with Croydon Museum. So it's the kind of borough museum. I picked five objects that I thought were really interesting. One of them is this object, it's a book by um, a Victorian writer uh, called Havelock Ellis and he wrote about criminals in the Victorian period in the 19th century. And in it there's this photograph of a prisoner being in, in front of this kind of like mirrored contraption. So like this was just like a, an old black and white image in a dusty book that people had completely forgotten about. And I was interested about starting a conversation with it. They believed in the 19th century that if you're a criminal, there were certain criminal traits. So what they did was they used photography to photograph prisoners and they'd try and identify common features. So we remade this contraption for photographing prisoners. We decided to kind of invite people to have their photographs taken in it. So we had lots of people kind of taking portraits and selfies and like hashtagging it, we've got an Instagram hashtag. For me, it illustrates an idea which is like, um, how do you bring history to life? I think being your own boss is a kind of, it is, it's quite mixed. I mean, it's really great to be independent and be able to 
initiate your own projects and develop ideas. But at the same time, you need to be really motivated. Um, you can't rely on necessarily someone else doing things for you. If I think back when I was at school, I maybe thought like an artist was just maybe like in the studio painting or making sculpture, but actually I think art and design is very broad. You can do lots of things with it. You know, you could go into advertising or filmmaking or, you know, fashion design. So I'd say uh, inform yourself about the breadth of things and choose something that you really like. I think that's what's nice about kind of the creative arts is that hopefully a lot of people who do it have kind of a passion for it. So that, that was uh, another project that we think was pretty successful. Um, as you can tell, it, it, it's, the interviews were more than just, you know, how did you get this job and what do I need to do to get this job? It was, it was also about the creative process. Um, and I, th I think the, the results was, was really quite inspirational. Um, for these for these young people um so i'm going to move on to talk about this year now um so yeah all change um i'm i'm fully aware that ours is not the only company which uh, i mean it's just across the board isn't it so a lot of the the experiences we've been through are shared by all of you um, but uh, needless to say, perhaps we had to refocus the way that we did things because we were used to physical encounters. And, and actually, you know, our company name is Real, Real Connections, RWE, okay, but it's about connecting with people. And I'm not saying you can't connect dig digitally with people. Of course, we, we've had to do that a lot more. Um, but ideally, physical connections, I mean, they, they are much more enhanced. Um, so it's something that we used to do and we are hoping to be able to do again. Um, but for the time being, um, and certainly from, from March this year, we were forced to abandon or postpone indefinitely several key projects um, we we stopped all face-to-face -face activities and public events um, and several of our young people and schools focus projects that we were planning with with local cultural organizations including those with Norwich City Council we have a Lord Mayor's procession it's like a big kind of festival in, in July we were going to be doing a project there with them virtual reality that was out the window um we did we had a project planned with the east anglian film archive and with the norwich science festival they didn't i think there were elements that happened online but um it was just so reduced you know many people were furloughed it was really difficult to get hold of people and actually uh, plan and deliver um events the same in the same way that we would have done if this pandemic had not been going on. Um, there was another project called Music on My Mind, which was meant to be starting earlier this year and has been postponed. Um, and we have found a way to actually run that. Um, and I'll talk about that a bit with our future plans. Um, and I, I would say actually with that, that project, which is about record playing um, and discussions about music, um, that was designed in order to engage socially isolated men and men with mental health issues. And um, I think, I believe that the pandemic has, has really intensified a lot of those issues. 
Um, and the same goes with, with the young people that we work with. Um, teenagers have found it particularly tough, I, I think, to be away from, from social activities. Um, so we have continued to, to, do, to work with, uh, in particular, young people. Um, the, the image on that slide there of the building, the Theatre Royal, I put that there because the young film programmers group that we set up and run in Norwich was being run out of that particular venue. Um, but uh, as with all theatres, they, they've had hardly any activity going on there um, and they've made significant job cuts. It's, it's so precarious, it's just disastrous. Um, so uh, we've, we, we weren't able to, to go back to that particular venue. Um, and we may do, uh, hopefully, um, in, in 2021. Um, but as of now, as, as of this, you know, currently we're still um, remotely working. Um, so this brings me on to talk about young film programmers. Now, uh, this is a project that we run in conjunction with Film Hub Southeast, which uh, in turn stems from the British Film Institute's Young Film Programmers Initiative. So that's where our funding comes from. And it's via the Independent Cinema Office. They, they run Film Hub Southeast. Um, so when March came around and uh, colleagues of ours in the south um, of England, in, in Lewis, um, they were running, they had a, a really a intrinsic role in, in running the young film programmers, but they were furloughed. So we were approached um, uh, because we, we didn't furlough ourselves, we carried on working. Um, and so we, we took on actually more responsibility for, for this project in, in, um, in the COVID era. We, were, we actually got busier. Um, and we worked with, with colleagues at the ICO to, to find workarounds and ways to, of adapting the work in order to keep young people and these groups of young film programmers um, engaged in the work. Um, and uh, just to sort of uh, clarify, we cover 12 counties, including Bedfordshire, Buckinghamshire, Cambridgeshire, Essex, Norfolk, Hertfordshire, Oxfordshire, and um, Suffolk. Um, and I wanted to focus on Film East. Film East is the group that we set up here in Norwich. Um, and um, I have to say, we only, we've only been going since, I think, was it January, Guy? Something like that. Um, December, actually. Maybe it's been going about a year. Yeah. Um, so relatively young sort of group, but um, they have really developed in ways that we wouldn't have imagined, actually. Um, and this has got a lot to do with some very proactive members of that group. And uh, so they, they called themselves Film East. They, um, I mean, initially I should add, we were, we, we were working with them to program film events in venues. So um, yeah, we were, we were running, um, planning to run, run film events and supporting activities in cinemas and um, venues such as the theatre where we were working. Um, and that's what the other film work programmers group groups do as well. They work in mixed arts venues and, and, and other sorts of independent cinemas um, around the southeast. Um, but we couldn't do that. We actually had some set up um, and we had to cancel them. Um, and then we had to think of things that we could do with them instead. Um, so some of our proactive members, they, they, they've thought of various things that they could that keep them busy. Um, one of them, which we particularly enjoy, well, is, is their social media accounts. They're, they're very active. This is a screen grab from um, their website, actually. There's a link 
there if you want to have a look at the website you're welcome to um yourselves but um so what those members have done is actually sort of take that ball and kind of run with it and they've done all kinds of like video blogs and um written reviews and posted this that and the other and, and got involved with the local media um they've um actually been commissioned to do a i think it's a monthly radio program um with bbc radio norfolk so they've actually going on there and having regular slots where they discuss issues to do with film um uh, i think the subject last week was paddington um some of the members love the love the new paddington film to hear a little bit more from you guy um would you like to just briefly introduce yourself because i do understand that um real connections is very much your baby well so uh, yeah, how did it's... that um sort of come up to be but yeah um because we like anna said we'd worked together for for a long time and one of the one of the the key aims with all of this was to find ways to kind of engage people that aren't always access able to access um, film and, and, and music and particularly heritage material because that's one of the things that we found in the past that those two things can come together so those octagon events those Oct octagon chapel events that we we did um, which we I suppose we call pop-up cinema events um, on a different theme each time but the the feedback from the audiences was always so strong because there was something about people coming together in, in an unusual space um, to have a audio visual experience, if that doesn't sound too grand, but, but one that um, brings alive this material for the first time for a lot of people that even though you can give them the links to archive films from the region and, and nationally. I mean, there's a fantastic Britain on, a site called Britain on Film, which the British Institute, Film Institute compiled in, in a, um, across the country. There's a map and you can click on any region and find a range of films from different decades. And it's fantastic. And it's all there for free for everyone, but people aren't necessarily aware of it until you do a big event and you've got music and you've got drinks and they're meeting their friends. And, and so that's what we find is so important. And it comes back to something that's just so obviously become um, um, a talking point at the moment is around the importance of social communal enjoyment of things, particularly film and music. So that's just kind of the heart of it really. Um, and one of the one of the things that I mean, Anna would, would say this that I've I was most I suppose impressed and surprised by to some degrees with the, the film East work and the Young Film Programmers Project is once we entered into the lockdown period we um, we thought that certain things might work um, more obviously like watch parties and tweet alongs and things like this but actually and we're finding this with our record club project as well is that people like the opportunity to talk write online and send articles in and have them published and have people discuss those things their passions so giving people the opportunity to kind of shout about what they love and why they love it and tell other people about it seems to have become really important on these projects that we've been continuing over the last few months and I, you know, that's potentially, you know, possibly something specific to do with what we've been going through at the moment. Thanks, thanks, thanks for stepping in, Guy. Um, I won't tell you what the emergency was, but it's all <laughs> fine. Um, did you talk about how the Film East have been getting involved with film festivals? Uh, no. So Not it's yet. just okay. Well, it's just another example of how they. Um, proactively got on with things and uh, London Film Festival um, offer a certain number of um, press passes to to anyone that apply well people that qualify and and a couple of our young programmers applied for that and so got a pass to the London Film Festival and wrote lots of reviews and then Norwich Film Festival um, just sort of up and coming 
festival uh, that went online completely in November. And again, they got press passes, but they also did a few interviews with some of the filmmakers and that was, they were posted up. Um, so it's not just programming, it's, you know, it's film journalism, it's writing, it's um, blog, it's social media work, it's marketing. They got nominated for um, Film Society of the, the Year as part of the Cinema for All Awards as well. Um, so we're really proud of our group. Um, uh, we're a bit, I mean, personally, I think, I'm a bit worried that some of those really proactive members are going to move on. Um, this is a big sort of risk with the project in that, you know, they are so proactive, they'll probably go out and get themselves well paid jobs, <laughs> which, you know, they deserve. Um, but yeah, we, we, we need to sort of try and feel, keep, keep, keep the membership going somehow. Um, so Guy may have talked a bit about this, which was an aspect of the work with the young film programmers and this was in conjunction with film hub southeast so with them um at the helm and kind of hosting uh we we devised a series of industry sessions similar to the one that we're, we're in right now but with with young people with young program film programmers in mind so um a lot of the speakers at these regular events were um people in the industry like um, Ryan Gilby who's a film critic and journalist we had John McLean who's who's a direct writer and director um, he made the film Slow West with Michael Fassbender um, in the lead role um, the the ad you can see there is is uh, that was a talk with Bryony e. Ford who was the that theatrical theatrical sales director for altitude films so they're a truly sort of um independent specialized kind of um, film distributor um and she, she they all gave really good interviews and and again it was all devised with the with the young people in mind so um there was interaction with with the participants in the q a um and that's been ongoing since April and that's been really really a positive thing to come out of this pandemic um we did try some watch parties I think did Guy talk about that a bit so there's an advert there's an advert there for one of them that we did in May um the films were all chosen by the young people and then we tried various supporting activities like tweet alongs and um it, it didn't really work that well um, but I think there were useful ideas that came out of that process um, and I think what we've actually concluded is that each young film programmers group if the cinemas remain difficult to access there are ways that people can watch films together virtually and keep going with discussions and and like more private film clubs are probably the way to go there um, and, and doing like zoom chats afterwards with the small smaller groups of people is something that we found that was 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 a lot more productive than the more kind of public events where people can be a bit more reluctant to get involved and comment and so on one of the other projects that we worked on in the summer was a uh, something called the Young Norfolk Arts Festival and that all went online um, and, and our young programmers and, and us at Real Connections we devised a couple of events which were virtual and that was um, working with a author and illustra illustrator on character design and so he, he took the character of Totoro from the Studio Ghibli film and he sort of did a workshop that was very popular um, and then I interviewed a uh, local film locations expert um, called Crispin Buxton. Um, and that was a really interesting insight into the local filmmaking industry and how there are certain hubs now which are attracting um, productions. So he had worked with Joanna Hogg on a recent 
a couple of films got the souvenir um, parts one and two. So um, yeah, so all that kind of thing is, is, is what we've been doing since since March. And um, here is a little summary of numbers of, of well, impact. So over 2000 young people and school school children and pupils there uh, we've worked with. It's probably more than this because these numbers are a couple of months old now. Um, but we tallied up 17 partner organizations that we'd worked with and then nearly 6,000 overall beneficiaries for the projects which I, I don't think is too bad for a couple of years or well, shy of a couple of years of activity um, so moving forward then um, something we have been developing for the last couple of months is is with the independent cinema office and that's a digital training resource so we actually did some filming um, this is for young film programmers so um, I was presenting and uh, Guy's done a lot of editing and so this has taken a lot of his time in last, the last few weeks. That's going to be going live in the next few weeks. Um, uh, and I, yeah, I mean, that's more for the young film programs, so that's not a public thing. Um, but I think the Music On My Mind project, which I mentioned earlier, that's a really positive um, new project which is about uh, which is for men who are suffering from issues of isolation and so on um, and this is we're working with the Norfolk libraries so the idea was originally to go and play records in libraries and invite people to come and listen together and discuss music and any issues that came out of that music um, and we're sort of having to adapt that uh, we're going to begin with a series of podcasts in January um, and then we're going to build up hope, hopefully, depending on the situation with infections and vaccinations and all that business, uh, hopefully build up to having in-person meetings um, and events, actual music events that the, the men are going to program themselves, um, to kind of run and take ownership there. I should mention that's supported by the National Lottery Communities Fund. Um, and we're working with a local mental health charity called Twelfth Man, uh, which is all about men's mental health. So um, the Young Film Programmers Project, uh, we're hoping that will continue. And even if the funding dries up, we're hoping that the, you know, the, the, the groups themselves will be able to carry on um, now that we've sort of got them running, that they'll be able to kind of take the baton and kind of run with it we may not be there to sort of facilitate as such but if those proactive members can really kind of keep going then then hopefully we've got a bit of a legacy for that project <clears throat> and then oops um i would say that the, the sort of the main driving thing for us is to promote independent cinema and, and the creative arts um, as a tool and a, a method of keeping people engaged and improving quality of life and mental health um, and uh, yeah that's sort of our motivation so um, final slide that's it for me but there's our website which actually from next week I hope we're going to have a brand new version up there so if you want to look at it Wait till next week <laughs> which that's another ongoing project um so that should be live then there's my twitter handle and there's um got a facebook page and an instagram account so all of those things you're welcome to get in touch um and i think i will stop talking and somebody else some of you can ask questions thank you so much anna this You're was welcome. a wonderful and very comprehensive presentation on all of the projects that you're involved in and it feels like you're such a small team but you've got you know you've been working on so many different interesting and in lots of cases um grassroots um type of projects so i have i've been counting eight different questions for you but i don't want to monopolize the conversation so i'm just gonna stop the recording now 
and I will give people the opportunity to um, ask their own questions.